Hey, hey, come catch this wave with the fix squad. The fix is in. I'm Mr. Soul. I'm tuning in. What you doing? <laughs> Stand up, J -J James left, but the kids still reigns here. No tears, no love lost, no rain here. Delivers, I promise, Santa rain here. Love, love for the city still resides here. Fix for your ailment, faith that resides outside the lines. Detox your mind, cause it matters. Art, art outside the box, we paste better. The fix is in, and we rock a channel. We rock with them for what's deep within. Expose those who talk but don't live. Expose those who talk but don't live. Take offense, take offense. Judge by the fruit from the tree, but it's the fruit. Welcome back. Welcome back. You're tuned back into The Fix, your source for faith-infused hip-hop, R&B, and poetry right here on Sirius XM Channel 154, Holy Culture Radio. And y'all know what time it is. Uh, you, you know, we like to uh, make sure we uh, keep y'all up to date with all the, the popping artists. And uh, it's always a pleasure. Anytime I can sit down with my brother, I tell him all the time, man, he's a large reason why The Fix Radio Show even exists. Let's be very clear. When I was uh, changing my life, uh, artists like Lecrae and himself, uh, really helped shape and mold me and, and really, uh, it was authentic. I, I saw something in them, not only in their lyrics and their bars, but some authentic that I could relate to. So I, I'm so grateful. Uh, he, he back to making new music and, uh, we got a lot to catch up on and a little bit of time. So without further ado, let me welcome me and my brother, Mr. God over money himself, Bizzle. What's going on, brother? Man, I'm good, man. How you been? Man, I've been good. You know, we, we've been grinding you know we always busy i know you busy i'm busy Thanks. uh you know i tell people all the time be careful what you pray for <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> listen um you know before we talk about all this dope music man i always like to talk with my brothers man who gonna keep it a buck uh you know we we at the back end of this pandemic we know the pandemic is pretty much over with but i one thing i saw during the pandemic that a lot of kingdom marriages crumbled um, you've been always very vocal. You always share your relationship with you and your wife. Why do you think so many kingdom relationships crumbled and so many divorces during the pandemic? Why do you think that happened? Um, one, I feel like the enemies just turned up on marriage. Um, you know what I'm saying in general, but I think that different things have, have had to be dealt with. There's things maybe that had to be faced. It didn't have to be when you weren't in the first, in the person's, uh, face and space 24 hours, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then a lot of people, man, include myself, uh, dealt with depression, anxiety, different things that come from being isolated, from not being, getting out in the sun, from, you know, not, not, uh, dealing with anybody, but that same group of people forever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a lot of things that we didn't know contributed to our, our mental health and well-being that were kind of taken away during that time. And then on top of that, there was a narrative of the world crumbling. The world's like, you know, you got the racism, you got the, the, the pandemic, you got like the world's falling apart. Like there's so much going on that, you know, uh, I think it, it could potentially have different effects on different people, whether it's, um, you know, whether you're just more irritable because of it or because maybe that, that stress or that weight or that pressure, uh, forces you to reach for ways of escape or that, that might not be healthy or might not even be conducive to your, to your marriage, whether it's pornography, whether it's talking to women, whether it's whatever the case may be to escape your present reality that seems so, so dark and so dim. And so, you know, I can't speak for, for everybody, but I definitely know I've uh, watched some, some crumbled, some, some marriages crumble. Unfortunately, um, the devil's definitely tried to, to, to do his thing in ours. And, um, you know, we just, honestly, we just, we just continue to lean on the Lord, man. And, um, it's, it's, it's till death do us, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I, there, there's so many principles, biblical principles that you have to put to work that maybe you didn't always have to put to work. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. and, and it really, it really forced that. And so another thing too is we're in a, and, and this, it sucks because this shouldn't be it in the, how it is in the church, but in the world, there's a lot of focus. Everybody's being refocused on self and, you know, there's this big thing on anything that doesn't suit you, your needs, get rid of it, yeah. cut it off. The energy right. ain't, if it ain't all about you, if it don't, then cut it off, get rid of it. And so who knows? Some people might've been on that type of, uh, you feel me? 
<laughs> like now, now that's real. And, and so, so my my, you, you brought up a lot. Do you think we've given up on the covenant, the principle of the covenant, and what the covenant represents within the marriage? Um, I don't, I don't think so. It's just, see, it's hard because just from you know the marriages I know of, there there have been different things. You feel me? And so that even though it's all based around this pandemic and there's a certain type of thing that it seems to have brought. I think it exposed different things in different people. You know what I'm saying? It might have exposed things that you can't even, that a person realized that they can't deal with. I can't deal with the way this this is affecting you. You know what I'm saying? And mm. and, and so, you know, even if if you're depressed, I'm I'm not really good with this depressed version of you <laughs> you feel me like whatever the case may be and so i think it, it it depends on the individuals on whether or not they've let go of of that you know what i'm saying of what marriage is supposed to be but man it's definitely the the enemy's definitely um attacking marriages right and when you look at the other side of it you're looking at the the traditional family being broken up image wise right because now you can be a man a man and man woman and woman there is no traditional family the woman's not the woman now she's a birthing person and so all of this is being broken and so now what do you have but the marriage that god instituted this is gonna this a continued reminder of what it was supposed to be so naturally the enemy's going to try to break that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's real. That's real. Appreciate you sharing that. Listen, this mental health awareness month, uh, and you brought up, you know, just, you know, depression is real and, and we all kind of, you know, need some type of therapy to a certain extent. Do you, do you go for counseling or therapy or spiritual like therapy? Like, you know, speak to that and the importance of keeping your mental health intact. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I definitely do therapy now. I see a therapist, um, and just just researching things, you know, uh, and, and with that, you have to be if you're going to do a bunch of research and all that, you kind of have to be a, a emotionally aware person and, you know, knowledgeable because some people get at anything and just apply it to them. You know what I'm saying? Just but, um, you know, there are there are so many things that affect us. And it's not it's not just the, the pandemic and all that, but from childhood that you don't even know things that you just attribute to your personality. This is how I am. Right. Um, and so until until you you do some research and, and you're, you hear somebody talking about something, it could be whether it's ADHD, whether it's depression, whether it. And, and and something clicks like, yo, that's what I've been feeling. Yo, this is describing me. You know what I'm saying? And and it's all right, it's all right to get some help with processing these things from somebody who has who did the research search you're doing a long time ago and has helped other people, you know what I'm saying, that are they're in your position. Um, you definitely want to beware and be careful not to let the the natural um, trump the supernatural, right? And so you want to do whatever things in the natural you can to help. But at the end of the day, things are in God's hands and you don't want to start having a a, a natural answer for everything that, that supersedes the, the spiritual answer for it. And so, you know, it's, some, it's something to, to be wise in for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, do you think, um, you know, we understand that this pandemic taught us that uh, for a lot of the ministries, a lot of the church, we had to embrace and understand technology to a whole nother level. A lot of people were not prepared when the pandemic happened. But, you know, coming out the back end of it, do you think that the church has become um, more entertainment driven now compared to teaching the Bible? I don't think so. I feel like. I feel like when you say that, you're probably talking about a Mike Todd or somebody like that, like specifically, but the church as a whole, nah, I don't, I don't think it's become any more entertainment driven um, at all. I believe that voices have been given and, and not, you know, not Mike Todd, but just like on the, from an influencer level, 
um, voices has been, have been given to people who are able to thrive in that space who didn't really have a, might not have had a voice prior, you know what I'm saying? And so it can seem like an entertainment value. And sometimes it can, that the, the, the problem with getting a platform, right, is you have to be careful that you don't fall into doing whatever people like. You know what I'm saying? Like, even in music, I've had to make sure that, you know, like, yeah, it's a, it's a business, but this ain't no, oh, we see the analytics, and they like when I say stuff like this, so I'm going to keep saying stuff because that's where God start, stops leading, right? And so if I if I do this, if I say this type of thing, if I make this type of video, if I entertain in this type of way, it gets the numbers. And just like in the world, we say all money ain't good money, all numbers ain't good numbers. You feel me? And so, you know, I think wisdom is, is still having to be used in deciding who you're going to listen to. But at the same, at the same time, the Bible says that people will be drawn to those who will tickle their ears. You know what I'm saying? They got itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear. So when, when we're drawn towards entertainment and where, where the word is lacking and entertainment is pre prevalent, then that says something about us as well. You know what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, I think, I think, uh, I think it's just in the church. I don't, I don't see much of a difference, even though we've become more, a little more tech savvy because we've had to, mm -hmm. but, um, I don't think it's, it's, it's much different. Uh, listen, uh, you said some stuff and, and I appreciate you sharing that. I do think it's an individual, uh, journey with your relationship where you are, because we, we get a lot of flack too as well. A lot of people want us to put out shock content and we like, no, nah, no, nah, that's not what we're for. When you come to the fix, we're not for shock content. We're trying to point people back to Jesus. We want to give you substance and knowledge. So that way you continue to grow your relationship with God. I ain't into that shucking and jiving. Bruh. I ain't, yeah, <laughs> listen, that ain't me. So you ain't going to get me dancing all in the videos. No, no, you're not going to get it. No, I'm, I'm not that guy. They, they be trying to get, they want me dissing somebody every song, bro. Like, I had to learn early on, right? When I was new, everybody tried to put a battery in my back, right? I had people yeah. offer deals that wanted me to dis keep dissing people. I had people offer deals that wanted me to stop dissing people. Like, and you know, there's, I'm not really trying to be controlled by nobody, but God, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to follow his lead. And so I think that is the, the thing for every individual, but especially when you have a platform because who gave you the platform who do you say that that platform belongs to so how do the people outside the platform get to control where you go with it you know what i'm saying um and you know uh, i'm glad i'm glad like you said you don't really be with that because that's the same that's the same thing I'll, I'll be on i got a record uh it's not out it's gonna be on the next project called nobody's mascot and it's like, bro, I'm not, I'm not nobody's mascot. I'm not the Christian mascot. I'm not the black mascot. I don't none of y'all run me, bro. Your opinions don't run me. The word of God, I submit to Him. You know what I'm saying? And and I fall where I fall, and you gonna feel how you feel. But I'm not tap dancing for nobody. Listen, that's solid. Listen, DJ Focus, you tuned into the fix. Uh, listen, we got to go to a quick break. We coming right back with more from Bizzle. Don't touch that dial. Keep it locked. You tuned into the fix. You know the fix is in. Culture Radio. We're not just background noise. We play the music that inspires you because every song has a story. Christian hip hop and RP music and talk on Sirius XM Channel 154, 24 hours a day. Holy Culture Radio is changing the game. Discussions about faith, arts, vocation, and education. We talk about the real issues that affect our communities and work together to find solutions. Join the discussion at holyculture.net and be heard. Welcome back. Welcome back. DJ Focus, Dice Gamble. You tap back into the fix right here on Sirius XM Channel 154. Holy Culture Radio. We still got uh, God Over Money represented the man himself, Bizzle, on the line with us. So, Bizzle, let's talk about it, man. Uh, we, can, we can talk this uh, hip-hop conversation. Um, hip-hop turns 50 years old this year as we acknowledge that hip-hop has been in the game 50-plus years. You have not only had a stamp on hip hop. I, I would argue that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of your records have helped some of the mainstream artists even recognize, uh, just Christian hip hop and just gospel rap, whatever you want to call it. What's your, your take on the state of hip hop total? Like 50 years of hip hop. Where do you see it? You know, this is a culture you love. You grew up in. 
wh- wh- where do you see us at in 50 years? Where do I see us at in the next 50 years? Or, yeah. or how do I feel about no, no, it now? No, 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 how do you feel about it now? Forgive me. How do you feel about it now? The state of hip-hop right now, 50 years old. Man, I fell out of love with hip-hop. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I, I, I'm a... Uh, it, I feel like it, it's super controlled. It's, it's controlled by people who wanted to do what it's going to do, right? And so we live in a world of influencers, right? What's an influencer? Their whole job is to influence you. And so if I want to sell you some sunglasses, I'm going to reach out to an influencer, and then they're going to put the sunglasses on and talk to you about them, and they're going to influence you to buy my sunglasses, right? That's how product placement works. That's how, okay, let's people, we want people to, to, to buy Hyundais. Let's put LeBron James in a Hyundai, right? He doesn't necessarily drive one, but or own one, but his job is to influence you. And so hip hop is a bunch of influencers, right? And so there's somebody who chooses the influencer and they chooses what they're going to influence you with. When you listen to hip hop, hip hop is a lot of death, hypersexuality. Uh, it, it's just you know drugs. All of this, uh, it, it's a, it's a lifestyle being promoted that will lead you to hell. Overall, you have your your individuals who are not all on that, but as a whole, it, it, it's mad reckless. You know what I'm saying? And and I feel like the the genre of hip hop specifically is like. And it's been a study's been done where it's number one for murder content, number one for misogyny, it's number one for drug content, it's number one on radio. You feel me? And so I don't believe that I believe that that's intentional. And so whether you want to blame the artists or you want to blame the the people who are signing the artists, these people are being paid to influence you this way. And there are some artists who, when they when they decide they don't want to influence you this way. They get dropped from their label or you stop hearing from them uh, or there are people who won't get who don't get deals because they won't, you know, what I'm saying influence you right. to, to, to kill your own and all this stuff. And so right right now, I mean, you know, it is a business. I feel like hip hop's bought and paid for. And, you know, it, it, it the, the influence mm-hmm. is, is terrible. And so, you know, me and a lot of a lot of Christian rappers. And even some secular rappers are trying to do what we can to combat that. You feel me? Uh, because it's a tool, and the tool is powerful. And so, and that, and that's the thing. Somebody, you know, the people at the top, they realize how powerful it was, how influential it was. And instead of trying to kill it like they was in, in the beginning, they 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 decided they was going to control it. And so, right now. I'd, I'd be you. I'd be like, yo, you know, I love hip hop and all this, blah, blah, blah. but it's not one. It's not what I grew up on. Two, even what I grew up on. Once I got wiser, that wasn't lit like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I think it's it's, a, it's an amazing tool to reach people, and you know, we fighting a good fight to to make a difference in it and kind of change the trajectory uh, if we can. No, you are. You definitely do it. That's one thing you've always been vocal about, the manipulation of music and how it has manipulated us. So I appreciate you doing that because uh, there were not enough artists speaking up to the, to the, the level that you speak up and, and being honest about it on how it affects our spirit, how it affects our day-to-day living. Now, stop it. You're putting this music in, you you constantly doing these things, whether you receive it or not. So don't act dumb. <laughs> Listen, have you been able to, and I know you have, but, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about just building the relationships with some of the mainstream artists, like, I know it has to be, like, some mainstream artists that reach out to you, like, man, your music is dope, man, your your music's got me through a trying time. Have you been able to build some relationships to where you can, like, minister to them, maybe disciple them to a certain extent, to where you can get them to see that their lyrics and their contact uh, content that they put out is is important on what they say i wouldn't go to the to the length of discipling but i've, I've been able to have a, a couple you know lightweight conversations or whatnot okay. but if i'm honest i'm not an easy person to build with because i'm a i'm an introvert <laughs> you feel me like and so i kind of i, I kind of stay in my to, to to people i can trust especially that's what i've been taught by being on this platform but um, you know, I've, I've had some, some good conversations and 
I'm going to always, you know, stand, stand my ground on, on what I believe in and, and try to get people to see what can be seen. You know what I'm saying? Even though the Lord is responsible for, you know, uh, revealing things to them. And so, um, and some people, some people know, some people know they just gotta, you know, stuff every, a lot of people still got to hold on them and that's it. Right. And so usually the, the longer you are in something, the deeper you go, the harder it is to let go of it. You feel me? Like when I, when I got saved, I was, I had been working on a secular album, you know, for about three years, shot a video, got all, everything was, we was getting ready. And then I got saved. It was hard for me to let go of the dreams I had when I felt like I was that close. It was hard to scrap something that I put so much time, work and effort to into. You feel me? And so when someone has, and I didn't even have money like that. So when you add someone who spent so much time building something, becoming one with the thing that they're building their career, and and then you add money on top of that, you're looking at a whole bunch of things that they kind of like the the rich young ruler that they that they kind of got to get around. And you know the, the Bible says that's hard. And so you know I'm always stand my ground, but but I, I I get it to a degree as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's something I don't think all, a lot of the people who are believers <laughs> do because they, mo most of the people who expect somebody to walk away from a million dollars, they never walked away from a million dollars and wouldn't. You feel Facts. me? Facts. Um, Facts. A lot, a lot of things people expect you to do, they wouldn't do, nor have they ever done, uh, as far as sacrifices, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, I, I, in those conversations, you know, I always let the truth be known, but you know, it's, it's for the Lord to, to complete any work he begins or decides to begin. Yeah, I agree. I, I used to be very critical too, as well. When I first changed my life, I was like one of them fire brimstones going around, giving out tracks and everything. And then God, he placed it on my heart, the grace. He said, I grace you to even get to this level to where you are. And now you condemning people without building relationships. So that's why I always ask that question. Because a lot of people, to your point, they're, just, they're judgmental, but don't want to build a relationship. Don't want to understand what that individual is going through, what, they, what they're trying to, like you say, the obstacles they have to overcome. So mm -hmm. that's real, man. Appreciate you sharing that. Let's talk about it. Light Work 3 It's out now. It's crazy. Let's be very clear. This one, I appreciate you putting out a project. I don't know why people don't want to put out projects no more. I know we live in this single driven uh, streaming situation, but you putting out a project, it meant a lot to me and a lot of, a lot of the listeners. So let's talk about it. Talk about the inspiration behind it of even put this project together. Well, I mean, so I, I wanted to put a project together cause man, like you said, I know a lot of people ain't, ain't, ain't really trying to put out projects or they putting out very small projects, but everybody, you see, it, it, it's hard because business wise now now the the uh music is still run by an algorithm right when you talk about spotify and how these things work with playlists so the algorithm just kind of like how instagram might you know it might help you to post more often the algorithm over at, at a spotify might it might help you to release more often and so i'm i might i'm doing myself a disservice by not releasing music all the time in that regard you same thing on youtube you feel me and so it's like you gotta you gotta pick your poison because i also don't want to just oversaturate people with um i don't know it's like it's never it's never an event when anybody drops an album anymore and i'm like i don't want it Thanks. like when i drop an album i want it to be like yo this was dropping the album I don't want it to be like, yeah, I know he dropped one two weeks ago. He's dropping another one. Oh, that's cool. You feel me? Like, <laughs> I, I, I would like what I do to be appreciated for the time and effort that I put into it and uh, not just, you know, give you something and then you on, you on to the next one. And so um, this one, the inspiration, though, was really like my, my last album, the Soul Therapy album was a whole different vibe, right? It was me 
Um, I wanted to write an album in the pit of my depression because like that's where I was. And so I knew a lot of other people were there as well. And so I wanted to write something that can kind of meet people in that space. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, but, but a lot of it is, it was kind of, you know, deep, very deep content, you know what I'm saying? Very somber vibe. Um, for light work three, it, it more so represents the, the coming and climbing up out of the depression, you know what I'm saying? Which is, gotcha. which is where I, uh, I am now, or, you know, <laughs> I was, and then <laughs> my cousin passed a few weeks ago <laughs> and it was down and it was, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, still fighting a good fight, but, um. Yeah, that that that's what it is. So you see, it's a lot of a lot more up tempo or upbeat, friendlier, funner vibe. You know what I'm saying? Um, that can kind of help lift people's spirits. Like, okay, you in the you're, you're down. You feel the feelings. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I relate to you on that point. Now let's get up together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's good. Listen, my condolences to you for your loss too, as well for your family members. Um, yeah, I agree. This 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 thing is off the hook. So I, I just want to get a couple, uh, break down a couple of these songs. So one, let's be very clear. There's no L's with Miles Minnick and Fat Man Scoop. Like, talk about that bringing that collaboration together. Like, I know that had to be like a little, you know, a little epic in its in its own little little stance. Yeah. So, no L's is actually the first record me and Miles did. And so we mm. did that before we put out the the ghost record on his project. And so I just been, man, half the time y'all hear music, I've been sitting on it for over a year already, at least. Wow. Um, tr <laughs> truth be told, there's a, there's a verse on that album from like 2011, 2012. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, I, that I spit because none of y'all ever heard it. Y'all probably wouldn't even know the difference, but, um, so we, me and him collabed on this joint and, uh, Fat Man Scoop, we've been in communication. Um, and you know, he, he always let me know like, yo man, you know, whatever you need from me, if you want to like, let's do some, whatever. And I, I kind of just been waiting on the right, the right record. You know what I'm saying? And so when we did this one, I said, let me go ahead and send this to Scoop. This might be one of them ones, you know what I'm saying? And he got on it. You know, did did his thing <laughs> in classic Fat Man Scoop uh, uh, form, and then uh, you know we just we went out there to uh, L.A. shot the video. We got uh, what's the name, Tommy the Clown, and, and, and them out there. You know what I'm saying? They they definitely a legendary little group out there in uh, in L.A. And uh, right. you know what I'm saying? We just wanted it to be the best it could be. Listen, feel my cup remix uh, with with Kitty Business. Talk about the the dynamics of working with your kids. Like, how, how, when when they first said they wanted to really do music, what, what did it did it take you like you know what I'm saying like off guard? Heck no, nah. they okay uh, okay. They've been able to catch the beat from months old. <laughs> they've been coming up <clears throat> coming up with melodies like. You know what I'm saying? Rap like they the music's been in them in a very obvious way from a very young age. You know what I'm saying? And so whether or not they want to use it, that's not something I'm gonna force on them. You feel me? I'm not gonna be the dad that's gonna make you do it because daddy did it. Um, but I'm always here to help you in any kind of way I can. And so with this record, this is probably it's always gonna be one of my favorite records just because it's it's me and my little my little boys on there, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But it, it was dope to actually, you know, get a chance to to do that do that with them and kind of let the world get a, a sneak preview of what's to come. That's good. On my own with Brian T. Man, talk about that collaboration. That was powerful. Man, so uh, I be, you know I, I I rock with uh with with Brian T. Man, he, he he's always been solid, and so um. This one, when I when I first heard that beat and the way it was knocking, I came up with the hook. Um, I was kind of like, "Yo, who can I put on there?" But then I then I, I remember like we did a joint on on Brian Trejo's album, um, 
but it was more like a, a calm vibe. So I was like, man, let me get Brian Trejo, put him on this joint. You know what I'm saying? Super commercial type joint. And uh, we mm-hmm. actually shot that video outside of a show we both had together in Long Beach out there in L.A. We like, hey, let's go over there and shoot while we both here. And uh, it came together pretty dope. Yeah, real dope, real dope. Very uh, much a, a vibe track. Last one, man, my favorite, and I, and I know a lot of people don't care for it, but I care for it, Bamboozle. Talk about uh one, thank you for putting it on the project. Cause I know you was uh, kind of up in the air about that, but just talk about the importance of Bizzle being able to spit all the content in this song. It's so much in this song that if people would just grasp it and just stop being so judgmental and just really hear what you're saying, and really start looking at stuff like, oh, wait a minute, some of this stuff do really actually add up. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, people feel how they feel for different reasons. Sometimes it's because, it's because you've been so conditioned by one side or the other to to reject anything that, that goes against your side, right? Sometimes it's, it's because you ain't got the heart to say it, and me having the heart to say it make you look a certain way. You feel me? And so... I've I've always kind of done things that, it, it, and it's funny because people swear that I like to be controversial, and I don't. I hate it. Like I like I told you, I'm an introvert. I'm mad laid back. I, I just do what I gotta do. You feel me? Like, and that's that's from the Lord. That's that boldness from the Lord. That you know, it's not that I love confrontation, but I'm I'm with the smoke if it got if it gotta be for him. You feel me? And so with this. Is just seeing so many things that are happening and seeing the way that they're getting misread and misunderstood and how people are just being influenced, right? And and and, and just such, such a lack of balance. Like, if I'm on this side, then everything the other side says I have to reject and every everything my side says I have to accept. And I'm like, nah, man, like the way, like the, the lenses that we're seeing through are no longer biblical or godly, but they're political or they're biased. And so, you know, with this record, um, I it actually got blocked by my distributor um, when I tried to put it out. I had to go out, uh, TuneCore blocked it. I had to go and put it out through DistroKid um, when, I, when, I, when I initially released it. And so that's the first time that they've ever blocked one of my records from me being able to put it out. And, you know, I hit them up about it. They didn't want to give me no answers. They pretty much fell back on, you know, that, that the it, contractually they don't have to tell me why they blocked my song. You feel me? And so I still put it on the album hoping they wouldn't they wouldn't block it or it wouldn't get caught up. And I, and I blanked out some of the words and um, it didn't. So praise God for that. But, you know, we got some more. We got some more truth coming up on this next one. The next one, so far, it ain't as friendly. (laughs) (laughs) All right, listen, I appreciate you, man. Uh, Listen, tell the people how they can connect with you, follow you on all your streaming platforms. Listen, uh, definitely uh, shout out your tour dates. I know you're getting ready to go on tour. And uh, introduce uh, one of your bangers for us. Yo, what up? It's your boy, Bizzle. You can follow me on Instagram, at Bizzle, B-I-Z-Z-L-E. You can look up Bizzle on all the other stuff, (laughs) and you're going to find me. Um, the big light skinned dude probably got a hat on, you know what I'm saying? Um, shoot, we, right now we about to go on this light work tour. It's, uh, me, Miles Minnick, Scooty Wop, and my bro Dayton. Um, make sure you hit up godovermoney.com slash events. We're literally, we're updating it, um, all week with, with, with new dates and stuff like that. Cause we're still booking them. So Make sure you uh keep in touch with us there, and then uh shoot. Let's see what 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 joint what joint I want to introduce. I got, you know what? Nah, play bamboozle. Let, 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 we we about to run that bamboozle right now since that's what we just finished talking to y'all about. And uh go in go in with an open mind, go in neutral, and just listen. And then before before you. Before you uh, address whether or not it hurts your feelings or upsets you, ask yourself, is it true? And then if it's true, then ask yourself why the truth upsets you. You feel me?